carnival time is the Caribbean carnival and it's on, on, and on. So it's time to come together, party, dance, music, wine our way down the street and have a great time. Welcome to Fire Africa Television. I am Patricia Baby Mawa. The Scotiabank Toronto Caribbean Carnival has become one of the most anticipated events of the summer. Over two million people from around the world gather in the city of Toronto to experience the food, the music, the masquerades, the costumes, and of course, our beautiful city. And right now we have with us the Chief Executive Officer of the festival, as well as the Chief Admin Officer. I'm talking about Denise Harare Jackson, who is the CEO. Welcome, Denise. Thank you, Patricia. And um, Chris Alexander, who is the Chief Admin Officer. Welcome, Chris. Thanks. Welcome. Putting together an event of this magnitude with several different events and branches, and I mean, it must be daunting. How is this like? What we do basically, we plan for the entire year. So once we finish in August, we start planning the next day immediately. The first few months is the wrap up. So we go through all our financial reports, all the audits and everything that we have to do to complete the year. And once that's completed, we start looking forward to the next year in terms of what we want to do, how we want to expand, who we want to engage. Because we have three stakeholder groups. So we have to debrief with them first and then to plan going forward. What are we going to be doing the next year? What events? We have some scheduled events that always happen every single year. These are the major ones. They're the parade, we have the Junior Carnival, the King and Queen show, uh, the panel live, the Calypso Monarch show, and uh, there's a the gala, which is a major one that we have every single year. So these are the shows that we always do, but every year we try to tweak it a little bit more and to try to make it much better for everybody. We usually get together with the city, uh, the police, just for security. We get together with the EMS, the fire, and then the stakeholders, which we have three major stakeholders. So the Toronto Mass Band Association, which is the ones who put on these amazing costumes. And then we have the Steel Band Association, Ontario Steel Band Association. They play the pan. And then we have the, uh, the organization club, so performing artists. These are the ones that prepare the songs, the commentary for the festival. So we go through that whole process, getting together. They're separate organizations, but they're still within the, the festival itself in terms of we govern everything that happens, all the performance that they put on, but because we put the stage there, and they perform on the stage. That's literally what happens every single year, every year for us. Wow, this sounds like a lot of work. I must commend you and your team. Now, Dennis, tell me, you know, um, there's something unique about the Caribbean. You have people from different backgrounds. You have Indians in the Caribbean, you have people of African origin, you have Chinese, mm -hmm. and this is reflected in the festival. Like, if you, even if you see the people that participate, it's very diverse. Tell me a little bit about um, diversity and the Scotiabank Toronto Caribbean Carnival. Well, if you look back, as you say, at the history of the Caribbean, um, you've got a, a wide um, coming together and a melting pot, as they would call it, of all these different cultures. And you would find that what we do within the festival is to bring all the different cultures into it. Now, you would look at a costume like this, and there are um, maybe, you would look at it and think, okay, there is uh, maybe a bit of an oriental flair, etc., and it's all tied into the imagination of the producer. Mm -hmm. So the carnival not only represents the participants where you would see in the faces, the forms, etc., and that's what the fascinating part of it is. Because when you had, let's say, the history of the Caribbean where the carnival was normally the celebration at the end of some tough period, whether it was tied into um, a harvest time, whether it was tied into uh, um, a religious festival, you would find that all the most of those, um, in those groups that came into the Caribbean had a carnival background. So you would see that manifestation within the festival and in also within the imagination. So you would have the French, you would have the Dutch, you would have, the, well, the English, I think, got the carnival from the French, right? Oh. And then, of course, but then you would have the Dutch. So 
there's all that manifestation that comes out, and it not only when Chris talks about music, it not only comes out in the depiction, but it also comes out in the different types of music that you hear. So I'll say, for instance, right now, where you have a huge Indo-Caribbean um, population, um, what they have done is melded um, one a, a traditional type of Indian music with the calypso music, which they call chutney. Yeah. So as you know, chutney is tasty. Ch chutney is always a, an enhancement to food, but this music is called chutney. So that's all part of the diversity. Wow. It's interesting that you, when you speak about the origin, you said the different you know, people brought their, a little piece of them to the Caribbean. Uh, where I come from in Nigeria, there's a carnival called the Calva Carnival. Okay. If you see the costumes uh, in Calva Carnival, you think it's the Scotiabank Toronto Caribbean Carnival. So there's a lot of you know, um, that sort of um, connection between the continent and the carnival. <laughs> Planet Africa Television will be right back. come out today to congratulate the Scotiabank Caribbean Carnival on its 46th year of success. You know, as someone who has Caribbean roots, I'm so proud of the festival. It's the one of the largest of its kind in North America. I'm glad to know that things like generosity, uh, values like uh, family and, uh, and, uh, and taking care of one and each other, they're all part of being Caribbean and I'm so proud to be part of uh, uh, the Caribbean uh, diaspora. So thank you very much and I have a quick message from our Premier. 
who, uh, who says on behalf of the government of Ontario, I'm delighted to extend warm greetings to everyone attending the official launch of the Scotiabank Caribbean Carnival. Congratulations on another spectacular year. Every year close to a million people from around the world come to Toronto to watch our exciting mass bands and celebrate the music, color, and energy of the Caribbean islands. So on behalf of the government of Ontario and all my colleagues at Queen's Park, congratulations to 46 years of success, and I wish everyone a great caravan season. Today, you just can't think about summer in Toronto without seeing images of brightly colored costumes, the sound of the steel band, and the smell of the grill. 40 plus years ago, this event started as a small gathering on the island. Today, it is a huge celebration that everyone's invited to attend. In 2008, Scotiabank came on board as title sponsor of the event because our roots in the Caribbean run really deep. Giving back to our community is a big part of the rich culture at Scotiabank. Torontonians and visitors alike from all backgrounds are able to celebrate the vibrancy of our Caribbean culture. And I hope to see you all there waving your flag. Have a great time at the festival and thank you for coming today. Tell us, Chris, what are some of the fun parts? I heard a lot of people have um, met and got married uh, at the carnival and all kinds of fun things happen at the carnival. People meet once a year sometimes at the carnival. Tell me about some of the fun uh, things that people uh, you know, look forward to at the carnival. I think most is uh, getting together. If you come from the Caribbean, most of the time, you want to meet people you never met for a long time. So people come from all over the place. They come from the States, they come from England, they come from other parts of Canada. So the fun part is actually getting to meet people and seeing the costumes, seeing the masquerade, participating. Food is a big part. So for instance, if you go to Maryland Bell Park, you might be there, a bunch of us as friends, and we the parade will be going on in the background, but we're catching up. We, we're having fun, we're eating food, we're having drinks. So that's happening. It's a celebration taking place in at the, at the moment. So that's what's happening. So the big part of it is getting together, people wanting to um, reminisce, for the, because remember, it's, as Denise always says, a ritualistic thing. We go through it every single year. People come back again and again and again. So you'll find that it's a natural following because carnival has a following. People go from one carnival to the other. So the people who come to Toronto, they've been to Trinidad, they've been to Boston, they've been to Atlanta, they've been to London. Some of them follow the carnival all over, but because of what we do here, it's unique because it's for a short three-week period, it starts, most people think the carnival is only that big day of the parade, but it starts in July. July yes. And then we go through the launches and then the junior carnival, which is a big carnival in itself. And then we get into the king and queen, the amazing show. We get into the pan and we get into every single thing else that we have. And then we go to the final one, which is the parade. And then we do the after the parade, which just say is going to be a chutney show happening in um, Italian gardens out in uh, Malton. But the fun part actually for me is meeting people and having fun and listening to the music and having to go through the whole planning process of everything. Even though it's a lot of work, it's exciting mm -hmm. because you see the results of your lead afterwards. And that's a big part of it. Well, that's great. I mean, at the carnival, you don't need to know anyone. You just dance together and just, you know, have fun. Now, I would like to talk about the costumes, the creativity, and every year it has to be different. Tell me a little bit about, and I know there's a competition about that too. Yeah. Tell me about mm -hmm. that. So, again, based on, okay, so we, we know carnivals would have come out of um, all the different rituals. But in Trinidad on, uh, in, and Tobago, on which this carnival is the model, they've got, you know, the competition. Because, I mean, people work hard. You know, you have people who design, um, design like an elaborate costume like this, which is, it belongs to a band leader um, whose, um, whose band is called Tribal Knights. And this is, is, you know, like it's a sunburst. So after all this hard work, what is in it for me? What is in it for them? So there is this element of competition. 
am I good? Am I better than you? Am I better than you? It's friendly, but it's serious too, right? It's very serious. Um, but you know, what is the more unique part of the carnival? When we talk about designers, a designer can, I can be a designer, you can be a designer. Um, it, it shows that there are so much in it creativity in a lot of the people. So they are not formal design. They haven't gone to design mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. but through their imagination, they have learned to build costumes. So for instance, a costume like this probably is weighing maybe two, 300 pounds because I know somebody has wow. worn that on their back, wow. right? So someone would have worn this on their back and we have both male and female um, uh, masqueraders. Now this costume would have been like one of say like a king costume. So in the competition when Chris talked about um, the king and queen show, why not? There is a king of the carnival, there's the queen of the carnival and they come out in these beautiful elaborate costumes where they portray, they are judged on a number of, of criteria. W um, you know, not only the imagination and the creativity is the engineering. So for instance, right now, we partner with the Ontario Science Center, which is one of our great educational institutions here. And what they come and do every year with us is that they actually judge the costumes on specific criteria, the best use of material, environmental material, weight distribution, engineering. And they actually go as close as possible to these costumes when they do judge them. So that when even the person who presents it, like I said, you have a two, 300 pound thing on your back, you've got to be pretty strong yeah. and you're dancing and you're pre presenting it to the audience, you have to make sure that you actually portray it and, 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 and it, it shows in its splendor, the lights hitting on it, and, and you actually have to make sure that, that you can carry this and really and truly do benefit to the, to the designer's um, imagination. Planet Africa Television will be right back.
The carnival has won several awards. Um, it's been named among the top 100 carnivals and achieved a level of distinction. Uh, this must come from your ability to, you know, not just um, achieve excellence, but to have a goal and then reach it and do all that. Tell me a little bit about the, what has made your team very successful at running this carnival. We attribute a lot of the success to the people around us, basically. Uh, we put the festival on, but if you look at the creativity that takes place, for instance, then you just talked a lot about the costumes. The mass bands literally go all out to come together with these things. I mean, they're planned for the entire year. Uh, if you think about the pan and the music that they do. So the volunteers that come out every single year and uh, put a lot of blood and sweat into this festival. Remember, it started in 1967. And so there's a lot of people we have to give, uh, remember these people because they're literally brought this whole process together every single year. In terms of strategic planning, we have to plan every single year. So our plans are uh, years in advance. So every year you cannot come with same old, same old. So you have to be fresh, you have to be new. People are not coming there. You don't want to be here saying, okay, being there, done that, we've seen that, I have the cap to wear for it. You want to come out with something brand new. So that's the new and fresh piece that comes out every single year. And we have to continue to be sharp on the toes. And as I mentioned earlier, because we don't own the venues that we're in, it's constantly changing this dynamic environment. For instance, this year, we're inside Exhibition Place, but there's two things that's happening. One, that there's a hotel that's being built right now, next year. So we have to tweak around that in terms of changing the route from what it used to be the last two, three years to what it is this year. So the planning that takes place to put that together to make sure that everybody is satisfied, the city is satisfied, the emergency services are satisfied, we have proper security, the route is long enough, everybody knows that they can participate and then we have to start educating the the masqueraders is because you're not on the same route again or there's some tweaks and some changes that's taking place you have to have root committees formed you have to have judging committees formed you have to have rules and regulation committees formed so all these committees get together to kind of strategically put the festival together to make sure that we are in line and then it comes to the financial piece because even though it's such a large festival, we have to make sure that we stay within a certain budget. And uh, do, if you don't meet about <laughs> you know exactly <laughs> that we cannot spend more than we have. And even though the festival is that large, there's always the challenge of making sure that we have all the funding to do the things that we need to do. So part of it is how do we get the festival? <laughs> Planet Africa Television will be right back.
Denise, tell me about how people can find out more about the carnival, um, where the routes are, how they can get costumes, how they can get into one of those costumes, because people out there watching can actually participate if they're interested. Right. We've got our website, uh, which is the torontocaribbeancarnival.com website. That's one of the main websites. And of course, we know also word of mouth also works well so you would have a friend of a friend but linking from our website we have a links also to the Toronto Mass Bands Association now for this year's um, festival there are 12 bands that are participating okay. and they range in in the in the number of people who are here and some people have definitely have preferences but um, you know so going to our website the torontocaribbeancarnival.com website, definitely. You'd get a link to the mass bands. You would see all the other kinds of activities that are happening. So um, that's our main portal for information and we encourage people to use that. This year the parade is gonna be amazing. Just come out and enjoy yourself. Well, thank you so much, Chris, and thank you, Denise. Thank and I you. wish you guys the very best. You know, I mean, I look forward to it. I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, if you're done watching and you wanna um, find out more about the Scotiabank Toronto Caribbean Carnival, you can also go to our website, applyingafricagroup.com. And as you've heard from them, you can also get into one of those elaborate, beautiful, flashy costumes. And um, as I was saying, wave your flags. So see you next time. I'm Patricia Vivian Mauer.